Just a man on a mission, ambition to never fail. Personality electric, he is animated male. Intelligent and wise, calm and often cool. Chris James giving opinions while also speaking the truth. Empathy and compassion. Stephen Michael is here, helping you through your traumas, helping you with your fears. These three forces combine and keep it honest. Turn up the volume, cause this is the application of knowledge. Welcome back to the Application of Knowledge Podcast. This is episode 79. I am 79. Animated Mail. We have Chris James here. We have Stephen Michael here with us today. Pow, pow. In the building. We're going to have a nice, fun episode. I will not be talking a lot. <laughs> I will be talking just enough. And alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, what is our first topic? <laughs> <laughs> Don't let Chris get started because I already know where he's going to go. He okay. already gave me a, he already foreshadowed it. Let's go. I'm with it. Um, no, no, you're wrong. Oh, okay. Well, what do you got? What do you got? Wait, what's on your mind? Chris, what's on your mind today? Andrew Tate. Hey. Top G? Yup, the one and only. Okay. So uh, so Mel updated us and let us know that uh, he was off of the clink clink. So he is no longer on house arrest. Mm. So, no, I have not. not when Mel uh, told us about it, I, haven't, I didn't look into it more after that. I did start watching some of the uh, interview with him and Candace. But I didn't see, I didn't look into that update. So, did you look into it more? Like, are, is, does that mean that he's clear? No, it just means that he's on, he's off a of house arrest. However, it basically means he's clear. Yeah. Because the whole reason he was on house arrest was to make sure that he didn't leave the country. Right. The reason they were worried about him leaving the country and doing all that is for intimidation of witnesses tampering with evidence, all the things that they claim that he may have done if he was running a criminal organization and trying to cover his tracks. So the fact that they're like, you're free to go, means that clearly something's wrong with the case. Right. Because if he is what they say he is, then he's still a threat and should be on house arrest. Yeah, I, I know for, I mean, at least here in America, if you are on a pending case and you are on house arrest or you have what they'll do is they'll do a pre-trial um, monitoring. So instead of you, instead of you being in jail, they'll give you an ankle monitor. So that's your, that's part of your bond, right? And it'll, sometimes it decreases the bond or that will be the bond, but you'll stay on that until your case is resolved. Now, obviously in America, our, judicial system i was about to mess that up it was not coming out right uh is different from in romania but i would assume that it would at least be similar in the in the in the sense of well we're not going to let him off until we know that either we don't have a case against him or the case has been resolved so i assume that they there, didn't clear him, but they let him off house arrest. There's a, there's a lot that can be assumed by them letting him off of house arrest. It's not like he's good to go. Yeah. But it's, it's – there's – you took six months, six months, and you had several agencies, federal agencies, studying his text messages, his WhatsApp, his transactions. They interviewed people. You know, they put a hotline out. The did the, 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 the top G hotline. The top G hotline. If if if, if, if top, top G, G did something has, to you, has done. It was like one of them drug commercials. <laughs> Have you ever taken top G? <laughs> there is a class action lawsuit. You you know what I mean? Yeah. And after six months of all of this, them thumbing through his life with expert eyes, they didn't find anything. Yeah. Because if they found anything worth finding, the judge wouldn't have thrown out the the um, the, the charges, the, the case, the uh, house arrest. Oh. He would have said, "Well, of course, this man needs to be on house arrest. Look at this transaction and this woman. We have this statement and da yeah. da 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 da." So it's what it's always been, honestly, and it's crazy because. Obviously, I want him to feel vindicated, which I'm sure he does to a degree, even though it's not completely finished, but I'm sure he knows the direction it's going. But there's a level of vindication that I want, too. Yeah. Because people attacked me. And, like, I got attacked 
not even for necessarily supporting him per se. I got attacked for just simply putting him on my platform. All you did was you responded or you did a reaction to a reel that he was on because he was talking about his, his eating schedule. Or he, he said it's talking about fasting. Mm-hmm. So, of course, us being in the sp- sphere that we are in wellness and we do talk about fasting and holistic practices, it would make sense that something like that would be something that you would react to. And I don't even think you how talked recent, about how it. How recent was this reaction? Oh, this is five months ago? Or maybe a month into all of this where it was like the hype of people were really unhappy. Yeah, it might have been three months ago. Was it? No, because he was in. He was locked up for three months. Three months ago, he was still in jail. This is the beginning of when he was locked up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah so, so between December, but, but and he's but he's been off. He's been out of jail for like two months now. Right, that's why I said three months ago. Okay, so that's why I said five months, right about the beginning. <clears throat> okay, I, I'm pretty sure it wasn't five months. Let's ago. split the difference. I did split the difference. That's what two three months ago was. I already did that. All right, deal. So the point is, they, I mean, they, I think I did, I think I put it on Instagram. I don't know if I put it on YouTube. I probably did. And the reaction? Yeah. Oh, no, that's where they came at you. On Instagram. YouTube. Oh, well, I think I put it on Instagram too. Oh. Why you get it, man? A platform. I'm so disappointed in you. Oh, man. You, You were getting unfollowed. Like, I mean, like, bro, that's just like, that's, it's like, if we want to have intelligent conversations and dialogue, how are we supposed to spread information or combat information if we don't talk about it? Like we just assume that what we've heard it is in the mainstream narrative is correct. And that's the problem with our people. We just jump on what everyone else is saying because we it's the right thing to do. Right. And but we don't want to have any pushback. Like, I noticed that on, like, a lot of the big, like, my, some of my reels, right? If I post a reel and it gets big, and we're talking 10, 20, 30, 40, 50,000 views, I'll respond to messages, just regular or comments, regular, oh, this is great, or good information, whatever. And then I notice you can't at them. You can't mention them, right? These are people that clearly do a lot of, like, responding or posting on other people's posts, and they don't want to be mentioned back. So they'll never see your comment because you can't at them. I didn't even know that was a setting. Yeah. So if some, so you can turn it off so they can comment. You can comment back, but you can't at them. So they will never get the, notification. Never get the notification. So what it does is it really, I really don't like it because it really <laughs> allows, it, seriously, it, it removes accountability. Yeah. Because they'll never see it. Right. Because they're not going to, let's be honest, if, you, if you're scrolling and you see something and you comment on it, and you never get a notification, you're not going back to that. Especially if you just saw it and you were scrolling. It's not, if it's not for someone you follow, someone just so happened to post it in their story. You know what I'm saying? So people can say things online and then there's no repercussions for their actions, right? So it's very frustrating because that is the chance for someone to grow. That's an opportunity. Sure. Right. But because Instagram allows you to not be mentioned in those in those um, in those reels and comments and such, you don't have a chance to learn. You just you just you just get to perpetuate sickness and your your thinking or the mainstream thought. And then someone could really reply to you with something that could actually change your mind or give you truth. And and you'll never see it. But that all <clears throat> that also is just breeding ground for trolls. Of course, you know because some people they see a trending video and they don't have any intentions of necessarily learning. They just want to attack you. Yeah. Because a lot of stuff that's positive that's mentioned, they'll be like, "How can you hate on this?" But people will not even focus on a topic and then they'll start <clears throat> roasting the person, like. Oh, you didn't study this or <laughs> look at you. You look unhealthy or blah, blah, blah. Look at your hairline. <laughs> wow. They, they yeah, pulled that one on you? Oh, bro. <laughs> <laughs> they tried to go and I started getting weak. I just be laughing with them because shit. What you going to say? <laughs> I mean, what you going to say? It is what it is, man. So 
But because I had the exact same experience, like not being able to at somebody. Mm -hmm. I was about to go off. And I was like, you know what? I said, okay, I can't. He like he get, and it's in the profile be private. And wow, then, ghost. Oh, oh yeah, they do this on purpose. Of it, course, I see. Like it, it's ridiculous. So it's just like you want to engage, but then it's like it's a waste of time, and it's just getting you angry, and it's just a wasted amount of energy. And the people that were getting upset at you, Chris, um, they were primarily women. I'm assuming, right? Yes. And the. Um, what was the what would be the reason that if someone's angry at Andrew Tate and why would they take Andrew Tate like whatever they hate about Andrew Tate why would they project that onto you if they know where you stand and they know the things that you have been putting out is is like really helpful and beneficial to people because I've seen a lot of stuff like I'm not sure how deep is did y'all look into the, his case, you know? Because like aside from that video, Candace she did investigate. Like, I I saw there was another video that she came out with just a couple days ago. Said I'm convinced or Saturday. I saw that. I didn't watch. I didn't watch either. It was only like thirty. I didn't watch it, but no, it was an hour. It's like an hour, fifteen minutes long. Okay, but yeah, uh, but. Before that, I just, I just want to get your thoughts on, like, why do you think the... Um... Well, you know, they... they uh, in this day and age, you cannot have... You, you're not allowed to have any association... No affiliation, no association, no anything with anyone without people projecting that you, you agree with everything that person says. Cancel culture. That's, that's, the, that's the problem. Right. Like there was a time when you were allowed to say, hey, you know what? I don't agree with you on X, Y and Z, but on A, B and C, up, you're solid there. Right. And that was fine. Mm -hmm. It wasn't that long ago. But now if you agree with anything that anyone says, you agree with everything that they say. Right. And that's just the that's the culture. I, I mean, is it cancel culture? I don't know. Well, I'll say no, no. Well, I'm, I was, I'm saying that it is a part of that culture, because when someone gets canceled, everyone's supposed to cancel them. Right. You know what I'm saying? So if there's something that that's that's just part of that culture. So that's that's what I mean by that. I'm not, you know. Okay. But I mean, even even me and you, I'm not saying that we necessarily disagree on. I'd have to really think about something that we disagree on. Um, but we don't agree on everything, no, right? Um, or, or maybe we'll teach things a little bit differently. And but that is because of our experience on the topic or whatever, right? It, it doesn't necessarily mean that one's right or wrong. We can we can still get someone to the same outcome, right? But that doesn't also mean that everything that like sometimes what I'll see is that, and this ha actually can happen in a, another way as well, where you'll actually post a video and then someone will come to me and be like, can you explain this? Or I want to do X, Y, and Z, like like some sort of uh, fast or some sort of therapy that yeah. you talk about. And I'm like, where did you see this at? And they're like, oh, the channel, HA. And I'm like, I mean, I understand that I'm a coach. You know what I mean? I'm a part of this, but... I, you can't assume people <laughs> people assume that we just are the same person. We're like the same brain. Yeah. If Chris put out a video, Steven knows about it, right? Like we have we I am under the AHA umbrella, but at the same time, like you have your own independent thought. You have your own ind independent world and I obviously reach in and get things out of there and uh and and add to it as well, but I don't know everything that goes out. Right. Even if I even if I was able to watch every single video as soon as it dropped, I mean that, you know, it's it's still hard to catch everything. It's a lot. We do a lot of stuff. Yeah. And vice versa. I will put out something and I'm sure I put something out and someone has asked you about it, the five day fruit group. Mm -hmm. Right? Where people are like, How do I get into the fruit group? And you're like, What are you talking about? Yeah. Right? So it's 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 just like we have to look at things as the individual and learn to take what is good and then leave the rest, right? Like in that video specifically, you were talking about his diet. 
he's in great shape as a as a world class athlete. Right. He he is a world class athlete, kickboxer. Was he MMA fighter also, or just kickboxer? I, I think I think he may have done an MMA. Or okay, but not, I don't know. He's I, a fighter. Yeah. Okay. So I mean, obviously, he's doing something right. Whether it is his diet, whether it is his his work ethic. Whether, uh, you know, the, the way that he thinks when it comes to his training, like you can't you can't just negate that no matter how you feel about his politics or the way that he, you know, deals with other, you know, um, you know, interpersonal relationships. You can't just negate that and say, well, I don't care about the way he works out or whatever, like because I don't like him. Like that's honestly that's just ignorant. I, I believe I'm a firm believer that we should be able to look at any person and have the ability to learn from them and not absorb or take on everything that does not necessarily match with our morals and values. So that's why I say like, you know, like people, you know, I, I'll say all the time, like I'll go to, I'll go to a Christian church. I'll go to a, a synagogue. I'll go to a temple. Like it doesn't matter to me. Like I used to go to a Catholic church, you know what I'm saying? With the homie. Right. Every every Sunday I go to I go to my church in the morning and then the afternoon I go to church with the homie. Right. Like and they have totally different practices. Right. But I would still be able to learn. I'd sing in a choir. You know what I'm saying? I mean, supposedly serving the same God. I mean, supposedly. But yet we have different we have we have lots of different traditions. Mm. Right. So I don't know how that works, but that's a whole different conversation. But I think that you can learn from anybody. Spirituality versus religion. Right. But um. Mel, what did, what what was in the case? What did Candace? Well, it's like, and the reason why I just asked about the the comments is because I was just curious if the women who, I guess, they would respond to you in such a vile way, do they actually know, like, what he's been charged of, and who are the people that's charging him? Because this is only coming from one person, and this one person has a history with other men with the exact same scenario, literally the exact same situation. And so this goes back years, this, you know, a couple, a few years ago, like this lady, she would meet people. She, like mm. fir first off, her upbringing was very dark. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so she was like a porn star type girl. Here we go. And she's like a call girl or whatever. And I, this is stuff that you can actively look up. Like, you don't have to just, well, oh, how do I find this? No, if, if you did research, you can look it up. And so her history is started in, like, the porn industry. And so she, um, she, she wanted to be, she met billionaires and rich people and stuff like that. And she met this person, like, maybe an unattractive type people. And, like, she would meet them. And then put them in a situation where they, they've had sex, but after they've had sex, you know, because she lied, she would lie about her age because mm. she, she was underage. Wow. Ooh. And like she would tell people that she was like 27 or in her 20s or whatever, when really she was under 18. And so like a lot of men, you know, they would like try to like like distance themselves or try to get away from the situation because they don't want to be involved with someone who's underage. And then, you know, she starts calling and start pressing charges against them if they try to leave. And that's great. That's psycho. That's psycho. It literally is because she's basically trying to get them for their money. That's literally all it is. And then in this one situation, it, it's always like she'll have two guys involved where she – She's engaged with a present person. And if something doesn't go wrong with that present person, she'll call another guy and to say like, yeah, you know, uh, he's mistreating me and stuff like that. But this person, you know, they're falling for her because she's attractive and they're just trying to help. And um, she, she called, they, they would call the police and then they would get them under, um, you know, they would, Un uh, arrest him and then they will wow. have to go for like um you know like being a pedophile what that is bro that is the see this is the this is the problem this is the problem because there is zero ramifications for what she has done no she's backlash. been able to do this time and time again there 
Man, I hope Andrew is really pressing charges. They need to her. start. Uh, on, they're, they're, he's uh, suing. Like, uh, they, he's suing her. They need to start charging people with an actual crime for filing false charges. It needs to be an actual crime. Like, not... Like, this is this happens so many times. Now, I'm not saying a charge where you think something happened and then it wasn't what you thought and then it came out to be false and you get charged. I'm talking about knowing that you're doing something wrong or lying and then it's proven that you just lied. There needs to be a charge for that because people get their lives ruined. Sure. What's the guy's... um? Uh, what's his name? Um, uh, from Creed, oh, Jonathan Majors. Yeah, Jonathan Majors. Right. Another perfect example. Another recent large person where he's blowing up, blowing up in stardom. Right. His his career is finally taken off after after all the stuff he's been through, and then this girl pops out and lies on him, complete and utter lie. Nothing happens. Oh no. And even when you sue somebody. I mean, if she don't have no money, what now? Not not only is it not does it not do anything, but it's not going to get any news coverage. It's no. not. It's not. No one's really talking about the fact that Andrew's suing this girl. No, it, it's not. It even, doesn't matter. People people wouldn't even be like, what? So why would he sue her? He's a billionaire. What's the point? He doesn't need the money. She clearly needs it. But they said I, I heard he said as soon as he sued her, she lawyered up real quick and like had. Like a good team, I mean, I mean, regardless, there needs there needs to be ramifications, and I'm not talking about and I'm and, and people will will combat that by saying, well, that'll stop people from saying these things, right? And I say people because this happens to men and women, right? Obviously, there's the disparity in men because it happens to men way more, right? But this is not fair. It, I mean, and it's not one of those. And when I say not fair, I understand life isn't fair. And there are double standards, but this is not a double standard. You should not have the ability to absolutely ruin someone's life. Johnny Depp, right, is another one. Yeah. You you should not have the ability. So even if oh he sued her, da 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 da, found out it was false, right? Oh he gets a he gets he gets to sue her. He gets a couple. He gets five million or whatever. His name is still tarnished. As a man, your reputation is everything. Your status, your level of respect. Like you lose, you lose a lot when you are even accused of something of that nature. Yep. Anything. All it takes is an accusation. All it takes is an accusation, and then it spreads because most people aren't even going to. They're going to make a judgment. They're gonna. They're gonna say, "Oh, this is true," or it's false, right? They're gonna. They're gonna. And and in their head, it's now a fact, and it doesn't matter what you say, or even if they were found innocent, you still did it. So it's 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 wrong, mm. and what was it? The Me Too movement, right? The Me Too movement, which essentially in the beginning was supposed to be a benefit to say, "Hey, you know, open up, be vulnerable about these things." Then turned into this thing where now everyone just hops on the bandwagon and just automatically believes when someone makes some sort of accusation, and then the man is no longer innocent until proven guilty. It's vice versa, right? When that's of course our legal system where you're guilty until proven innocent. So it's 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 wrong and there needs to be a consequence. There needs to be something that deters them from doing this because this is bull and it's only getting worse. And if you have if you have men as large as these stars we're talking about, I mean you have to imagine all the small people that or or, or the that, majority of bro. men that we don't hear about right. that are in jail for these things. 5 years. Or or Statutory. or or they, or they, maybe they're not in jail. Maybe they got, maybe they just got a a charge that didn't actually cause jail time. But they didn't, they didn't do anything to these people, mm. and it's not, it's not fair. It's, and, and I really hate you, you saying know it's not what's, fair. You know what's crazy? If this is how effed up this is, if a sixteen year old girl who looks all, every bit of twenty two approaches me with a fake ID. Tells me she's 22, has the fake ID that says she's in a, 22. In a bar or a club. In a bar or a club. I have sex with her. She runs to the judge. He raped me. I'm going to jail. Right. It doesn't matter that it was a fake ID. Yeah. It doesn't matter that she clearly doesn't look like a child. It doesn't matter about any of that. It's like, 
This is why I don't have any respect for this justice system. Yeah. I mean, come on. We, we should, to me, uh, and honestly, and, and I know that, take this with a grain of salt, but to me, in those, in those situations, your charge should be thrown out. Yeah, well, Period. 100%. But not only that, she should go to juvie. Yeah. Her little 16-year-old self. Yeah. She needs to be in juvie. So like when you so like when you um think of it like this like when cuz I want this to make sense to people because I know some people oh no you should do it you should you know we want we always love to put it on the man it's like no well, number one in this in that situation he's the victim if he did his due diligence to ensure that this person number one if you're in a club and you're drinking and I meet a girl in the club. I'm not even thinking is she is she is she eight. is she under age? Yeah. I'm assuming she's at least 21. Right. Right. Now it doesn't matter how old I am. I could be. I mean, I've been going to the club since I was 21. Right. I've we I've we I've gone to the club under 21. Right. Now whose fault is that? I lied to the bouncer. Right. I paid the bouncer. Whatever. Right. Is that my fault? Like no. But in 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 the ends of um, damn, I lost my, what was I, I was, oh, let's say prostitution, right? So if someone is, if you're caught in uh, prostitution, both people get charged, right? Number one, you get charged with soliciting a prostitute and the prostitute gets charged with prostitution. Both people get charged. They're both wrong, right? So I don't understand what's the difference in this scenario where now obviously, if someone is is coerced or forced into something, we're not talking about that. I'm talking about where the woman is willfully doing something, being uh, misleading intentionally. How in the world is the man in that situation liable if he did his due diligence? It's the law. I'm not talking about you just met on the on the on the side of the you know on the street or whatever. You just met at the grocery store, and then yada yada yada. But I'm saying like if you said. Yes, I asked. Yes, I went in a club. She was drinking. Why would I, uh, you know what I'm saying? And she and she said, yes, yes, yes. Why would I, at the end of the day, like, you lied to me. You misled me. That's just like in, in court or in the law, if something happens and they find out that the witness lied on the stand, then the entire case can be turned around because you lied. So I don't know. So what's the difference? The difference is we live in a matri matriarchy. That's true. And they love to say it's the patriarchy. We're that, not. No, we're not. It's, it's not a patri patriarchy because at the end of the day, these laws lean towards women. Heavy. Heavy. I mean, I I anything, anything as it relates to like relationships, family, court, anything all of, it. of that nature is all women. women. Yeah. Uh, as, as far as outside of that, I don't know of any rights or privileges that men have that women don't have none so so we know that there's a certain segment of the judicial system where women are heavy there there it leans towards them heavily and we know that for the most part everywhere else it's even we'll say well I'll, did you hear about the did you hear about the woman who is stuck in dubai right now yeah i heard about it i don't know like details Okay, Mel, have you heard about it? Mm -hmm. Okay, so there was a just kind of move things forward. There was a woman um, called the Sassy Trucker. Um, that's Mel, what? that's that's her TikTok. Okay. She's a she's a she's a truck driver influencer. Oh, well that okay. We're making yeah, okay. and so she, when she originally went to Dubai, she said that she was going out there for work. She was going out there to drive trucks, yada yada yada, um, and she was thinking about moving out there, relocating. Well, her and her friend, so her friend was out there with her, had also had a rental car because they were out there for a few, few months working, or she was working, um, and then they ended up getting into some sort of accident. I don't know the, the level of extent of damage or whatever, but they were in some sort of accident while the, they were in the area. When they took the rental car back uh, to the rental car agency, they, there was an argument that, or, you know, that started between her and the rental car agency. And the rental car agency is like, yo, you guys, there's damage to this vehicle. You need to pay for this. And she ba and they, she basically was like, no, for whatever reason. I don't know if their laws are different with insurance or how that actually works. Um, but somehow she basically said no. The agency then started having a back and forth. And she started 
the the mainstream says that she just was screaming at him, but there's more information that uh, that said that she was out cussing him out. Um, Ooh, the cussing is probably like right. So, so now, so she, so the rental agency called the cops on her, and when the cops arrived, they arrested her. Of course, and they they put her in jail. She um, moving things forward a little bit. She she then stayed in for a little bit. She got released. But and, and this was recent. She recently got released. But she can't leave the country because they they took her passport mm-hmm. um, because they're still investigating right. it. The law in Dubai is part of the reason this is such a big problem is that the law in Dubai says if in a situation like this, something like this happens because it happens. It's a huge tourist country. They, the, the police have three and a half weeks to then resolve the problem or charge her and then release her or put her to jail. It's been over three and a half weeks. Nothing has happened. She just can't leave. Okay, I see. So um, the, 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 her lawyer, her mom, they're, just, they, they're putting it out saying, oh, she just, was, she just was being loud. She was screaming, which there's a law. Part of the UAE law states – that screaming in public is a, a is a jailable offense for up to one year, um, two years, right? Jeez, two years. <laughs> you can't even scream. Now, granted, that does not necessarily mean you're gonna go to jail, right? But still, right? But it is their law. That's right. just like saying, you know, it. You can get for a misdemeanor, you can get up to for jaywalking. You right. get up to thirty days in jail. Right, right. You're not gonna get thirty days in jail for jaywalking, right? But you can. But you can. So, but but now you're cussing. And you're being disrespectful. And you are in a country that is a patriarchy, Mm -hmm. right? Where they heavily weigh towards men. And men's job is to protect and support their women, Mm -hmm. right? So when you have a woman in this country who is being now loud, she's being an American. And they already don't like uh, Americans coming into the country being disrespectful to their laws, to their culture, to their people. They're like, oh, no, we're not putting up with this. I'm throwing her in jail. So right now she's sitting there waiting and, you know, somebody posted this on, it was posted on Facebook, which that's where I saw about it. And then I instantly gave my feedback, just reading literally the headline, which was a black woman jailed in Dubai uh, for, for yelling in public, which I'm just like, okay, well, first of all, just y'all just don't know Dubai. I said, you guys have to understand when you go to these countries, you have to go, you have to abide by their laws. And that was one of the first things that I learned when I went to Belize. One of the first things that I that the locals told me, hey, you're not in America anymore. You're in Belize. You, you have to understand how we do things because that's our that's one of their biggest problems with Americans is that we come to their country and we expect their country to be to bend to us. Mm-hmm. And it's like that's the ignorance of Americans. Sure. And the world feels like this. Sure. So She's in she's in she's not in jail, but she's stuck over there. She can't leave mm-hmm. because because she was yelling and well, screaming. Well, she's lucky. Wow. As far as I mean, as based on the information you've told me, she's lucky. That's, she's that's lucky. What, yeah, that's what I know. That the police didn't come back with with anything solid to Well, she's I mean, she's they have her on camera yelling. So I mean, they have her, you know, they can charge her like with more. I mean, she needs to pay for the for the vehicle. That's whatever. Whatever. I'm assuming that she thinks she got hit and it wasn't her fault. I'm assuming I I, I don't I don't have any information on the accident part. Mm -hmm. Um, But even regardless, even here, even if you got hit, you're still paying a five hundred deductible or whatever. You're, You're going to pay something out of pocket. So whatever that means, and their laws for insurance may be different. But they got it. They definitely have insurance. Of course. There's no way. And you'd have to be an absolute fool to turn it down. And also, I don't think our insurance companies are going to cover you over there. I don't see why they would. So, and we could be wrong, but if, 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 because I've never rented anything outside of the United States. Me neither. Besides a scooter. But usually you pay the Five dollars or seven dollars or whatever for their insurance. I'm if I am traveling abroad, first of all, I'm already going to be reluctant to drive, right? Number one, now she drives over there. She's a trucker, so she understands sides of the roads, yada yada yada, right? You know, I don't know. I find it really weird driving on the opposite side of the road. I'd be a little weird about it. I would definitely be like, all right, Chris, you can drive. I'm I'm not going to, uh, you know what I'm saying? But I would I would be I would bring a Vespa. 
or you know something like that or just uber or whatever take taxis yeah I mean, you know what i'm saying but i'm definitely getting their insurance because i don't understand how things work over here and it's very easy to get an accident especially if they drive closer i mean you have all these cars like you know you're in dubai there's a lot of money out there if i don't want to hit no supercar in this in this ford taurus you know what i'm saying and i gotta pay all this extra bread and women drive aggressive so i'm sure she and she's a trucker she should have definitely got insurance like being a woman overseas or in dubai driving that sounds like a, a recipe for disaster, man. <laughs> <laughs> just, just that's it. Right, that's the only that, reason. That right there. Just oh, being, a, a, being a woman and driving I, in Dubai's overseas. And I only thought Res- about it because, like, I went on, I went out with like a, a girl, and we had to go down the street or something to some store, and I went and got in her car, and she was driving crazy. I'm mm. just like, bro, like. Slow down, and she was. She's not the first woman that I've been with that just makes me feel paranoid, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or makes me feel like, bruh, like y'all need to relax, yeah, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't, nah, I'm not comfortable, man. I agree. Yeah, I, I, I want all man drivers. Hey. <laughs> wow, anywhere I go, like if I'm in a like a it's like a Greyhound type thing, and we're like on a going up a mountain or something, and we need to turn up a mm. hill. Bruh, it better be a man driver. If it's a woman driver, I ain't on that bus. You know, Andrew Tate said something very similar. Oh, where? Yeah. Was it was it about airplanes? Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I think I think <laughs> guys are just better at that stuff. And it's, it has nothing to say that women aren't capable, you know, because everyone's capable as long as they put their effort to it. But men typically do things that are more operational or more... In control because they're they're the ones who make the stuff you know and so we're naturally we're more men are more inclined to do things of that nature and women t- typically don't do things that that are like that so yes you, you would feel like because we play games like men mostly play games mm-hmm. you, you play games driving games and you know shooting games and like we do things naturally to have fun that when we actually get to it, that we're already prepared, we're already calm. We know the the type of things that we need to do, uh, you know, to to win properly. So, because I remember we was doing the axe throwing. You ever did axe throwing? Oh no, I want uh, I want to go there. Yeah, I'm, definitely I'm waiting for somebody to act right, <laughs> right, so I can take it. Right, them. right. <laughs> I was doing some axe throwing, and uh, it was my first time. How'd you do? I'm a, I was a beast. Did you, you was hitting? You was making? You it was going in? Okay. And, and I was with uh, this back when me and CB were together, mm. and she, she was just like, because I kept getting it like target right yeah. in the middle. She's like, you didn't teach me anything. I was just like, all right, look, this is what I do. <laughs> did they? Did they? When you went, did they give you a uh, like a course? Yeah, they teach you. Okay, it, like before everyone start, they teach you how to throw it. Don't throw it too hard, or don't you know? Oh yeah, because I'd be trying to wing that shit. But the blade's not, like, sharp. It's, like, kind of dull. So sometimes you do have to, like, if you want it to stick. But it's, yeah, man. Did you use one hand or two? One. Just one hand. Okay. Mm. Yeah. My man out here with the ninjutsu. Hey, man. I get busy out there, You got there, that man. Viking energy in you. Mm. I remember watching too much uh, uh, Vinland Saga. Mm. But, but, you, but, but, Mel, the point that you're making is a, is a biolo- it's kind of like a biological thing. Men like things, women like people. Men are going to be tinkering with their toy trucks. Women are going to have a tea party with their dolls and friends. It's, you know what I'm saying? When we're, when we're children, you see a very distinct, there's a very clear-cut line. That's the reason why you have most men in STEM. Right. That's why. It has nothing to do with you know, the, not, women not being encouraged enough or anything. Um, it's, it's just, it's, just it's, a bio, it's more of a biological they don't like, thing. Listen, they don't like it. Like, if you ask me to go work in a salon, I'm going to be like, bro, I have no interest in that. Even, like, even if, yes, could I do it? Sure. And I'm sure if I got into it, I'd be, I'd be, I'd learn, I'd be great at it. I have no interest in that. Yeah. Right? Most men don't. It's just simply because that's not what we're interested in. Right? But that kind of goes back to equality and all this stuff. When we talked about laws and what can women do that men can't or vice versa, they have access to everything. They're not in it because they don't want to be. They're not interested in it, right? But that's, I hate that that is an argument that is used saying, oh, equality, 
you there's only two percent of women that are STEM. No, because they don't want to. They don't want to do it. But you look at the beauty industry; it's ninety eight per ninety nine point five percent women. What is STEM? Science, Science technology, technology, technology yeah, engineering, mm-hmm. man. man. <laughs> oh, so it's multiple things. Yeah. Okay. It's an acronym. I'm talking. I'm, every time you said STEM, I'm thinking y'all talking about like the stem cell surgery type of stuff. Oh, no, nah, it's an acronym, but it just it's it's yeah. Science, technology, engineering, math. So um, they don't they don't they're but all of those things are logical number crunching, you know, puzzle type things, and it's just not what they're really interested in. Right, but if you then go to the the social part, right? Chris said the women are interested in people. Women heavily have a higher um, have a higher presence in that. So you're talking about your counselors, your teachers, your mental health practitioners, social work, social work, <laughs> nursing. Right? It's 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 just Child what care. it is. It doesn't mean that. I mean, don't get me wrong. If I was a woman, I'd probably be a nurse too. Number one, high demand. Right. And then also it's easy to get into. Right. You can grow and there's a lot of money in it. Like, seriously. So I can see why. I mean, you. I mean, I don't I see why there's a lot of female nurses, bro. If I was a woman, I would be feminine as F. And I would I would I would I would have men. OK, Paul, do this for me. Oh, you'd have you'd be so you'd be manipulative. If you was a woman, what what would you rate you on? A Here we scale go. Of one to Here two? we go. <laughs> Fresh face out of shower. Fresh face out of shower. All that. Uh, Dude, if Chris was a woman at six six, God, it's a wrap. I'm in trouble. It's a wrap. You just better get into modeling. I'm either gonna have to be a model. I'm either going to have to model, play volleyball, yeah. or you have to be in a sport. Like you can't be just tall for no reason. Yeah, at six six. I mean, I should. Be, I mean, you're you're the the difference in height is so massive. I mean, it's it's that's insane. Like, and especially because considering the skill level, that height gap is huge. Yeah. So, yeah, but um, I mean, I'll probably rate myself the same as I do now, which is a seven. You didn't say I can't use seven. That's true. Typical. T- typical. typical. But you know, before and and obviously, you know, Kevin has talked to a lot of people, so clearly this is a thing. But before I ever even knew that man existed, I would. And if you ask me, Chris, what do you want? I'd be like, I want a seven. Yeah, I, I want at least a seven. I've told people so many times that. You said at least a seven. Yeah, I mean, so a seven is would be a seven would be like ideal. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not a hard line. It's not like a deal breaker if you're not. But, you know, I, I sevens are they are above average attractiveness, but they're not so attractive to where they think there's got their God's gift. Because mm-hmm. I just don't like that attitude. It's just everything that comes with it. Yeah, it's a lot. Yeah, so. it's, it's not it's not for some people. It's worth it because for them, it's status just status. to be like, yo, look at my girl. Right. For like, sure. yeah. But I mean, bro, look at you like, you know, um. Did you know? Because you said you mentioned Kevin. Did you see that he's his page has recently been uploading? No. Yeah. On YouTube. Yeah, on YouTube. His actual page. Well, they they did say that they had access to it. Well, yeah. So it was I mean, no it's his I, content though. No, no, I oh, I know, but it's his it's like I, older stuff. I think that I I think also it was his it was his daughter. Mm. You think his daughter's uploading? I, that's what that's what I read. That someone said it's they so somebody was like my man posting from the grave. And they were like, "No, nah, he ain't in the grave. He's he's hiding out somewhere." No, but they someone said, "No, it's it's his daughter." So she's basically been going on and cutting up his content and just putting out clips that. But everything I saw was something that I hadn't seen. Um, so I saw one clip. Uh, I won't call it a clip. I mean, it was thirty minutes. Like it was a clip, but he was talking about men, and it was a it was newer content. Like not like not like men from seven years ago. Like, this is when he had this nice setup, nice camera, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But he was talking to men, like, had a guy on the call and everything. Mm, okay. And it was just like, bro, see, y'all y'all want to sit here and talk bad about him for, oh, he was always putting down men or women. But, like, she is – she. I didn't watch all the, um, all the videos she's put out because I just saw it yesterday. But the one that I saw, I'm like, oh, this is great. 
And I got value from it. Here's a thought. What if her his daughter took all his content, uploaded it to an AI, and created a Kevin Samuels AI? Dang, bro. And then it could provide the same content because no. it, it has no. the exact don't, same don't, thought process. Don't do that, man. <laughs> That's a that's a disgusting idea. Would y'all support that? Yeah. It's his daughter. I mean, Bro, I, I, to be honest with you, it's a, it's disgusting. Like, would it be cool and you probably want to watch it? Yeah, but I, I would be conflicted. I would. I would be conflicted. I don't even want. I don't. Man, can't nobody replace Kevin. I don't want even that, an AI. No, I don't the, want the that. way that he navigates. I don't it would it. be it would be they, because he would he would have trained responses. You know, because that's like me. I may respond to something the same five times, but then one time I respond a little differently because something that they said 10 minutes earlier in the conversation. Right. Those nuanced things will never be there. But uh, I see you know, what you're the, saying. The learning, the, learning the, the ability for AI to learn is pretty high. Yeah, so, but he's not here anymore, so he can only learn from what is already there. There's no new right. learning. But the nuance is there too, right? It's if Mel's basically saying, you're because we're talking – Hundreds of hours of content. You're talking about okay. I see what you're saying. I and mean, I, also, also, <laughs> it's crazy because like you could you could give them his cell phone too, because you know your cell phone knows you better than anybody else. Mm. So your cell phone plus hundreds of hours of content, you could definitely reconstruct a person from that, and that's sad. That's crazy. That's, that's really messed up. It wouldn't be exactly the same because people evolve. Yeah. Right. So <clears throat> the Chris that the AI would have generated. 10 years ago is not the Chris that I am today. Yeah. And that's the thing you can never capture because it's just not, you, you can't do it. Yeah. But, um, cause it's my life experience as a human being that's altering my path. We, um, you mentioned 10 years ago, we talked about Andrew and Candace last week and we talked about 10 years mm. and, uh, it just had me thinking because you know, you were just, cause you were talking about 10 years old, you, what you did and how you lived. And it's just like, I think about myself 10 years ago and, you know, being 27. I mean, you change a lot in 10 years. Like, I mean, I, if you compare me to, and I'm not even talking about just physically, just where my mind was, what I was doing, what I was thinking, my twenties, it's like, you're a completely different person. Like that's, that's how we should grow. We sh we I believe that we should be growing to we're almost unrecognizable from our ten year old selves. Not not as not saying as though you won't look the same. I'm not saying you have to change physically, but the way that you move, the way you should be learning. Like, do you think that that is? And it just made me think like that's I I think that's a problem in our society. We like we don't really focus on a growth mindset other than maybe financials right like everything is like oh career money 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 but like what about every other aspect or what other other nuance in your life right i think that we should be able to look back like let's say someone's 50 years old they should be able to look back at every step at their 20s or 30s or 40s and they should all be different and and growing and compounding on them like what do you think about that I think that people have core personality traits and characteristics that, for the most part, are slated. I've, well, I agree with that. I've always believed that, and I still do to this day. Because even as much change as I've been through, a lot of my core personality traits, things that you might not be able to even understand until you really get to know me and spend time with me, you know, that stuff is still there. But obviously... Yeah, life is a journey, and if you're not moving forward, meaning if you're not growing, if you're not changing your mindset, if you're not, you know, having different experiences, then you're you're not taking the journey. And you're if you're not moving forward, you're moving backwards. I don't believe that because I talk about this in health. Like I don't, your health isn't slated. It's not stagnant. It's either moving forward or it's moving backwards. It's not a pond of water that's sitting still, right? It's not in a closed ecosystem. There are things that are influencing your life. Or when I talked about this on health, you're, you're, you're either moving forward in your health or you're moving backwards. You're never just sitting still because time doesn't sit still. So time is, is the master ager. So just like you can take a piece of fruit and any living organism and you can put it in a closed system, 
and it will eventually die. So no matter what, even if you do nothing, you're still moving. You're 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 still moving forward in some way. Is as in the, your age. Well, that that's actually a good point because energy flows. Period. Period. Full stop. Energy flows, so it's either flowing this way. Yep. Or it's flowing this way. Right. And uh, if you understand that as a hierarchical type of you know concept, then you can apply that to different aspects of your your existence. Um, and also people are evolving around you. So even still, like just the people you think about the people are evolving around you, you cannot if you are if you're staying still, you're getting left behind. Yep. So yeah, that's a that's a good point. Yeah, man. So we always got to move we always got to be working on moving forward and and everything and I I I'll say this cuz of course I think we're we're in our 30s, right? I think that at your 20s and 30s should look very different, right? Maybe when you maybe when you get to your like 30s and mid 30s to 40s, you know, you may not look as different, right? And then your 40s to 50s, you won't look as different, but well, now you're talking about the death process. Well, I'm not talking. No, I'm not talking about physicality. No, I'm- you're talking about the death process because what what is the difference between 20 and 30? And thirty and forty, growth. or forty and fifty. Well, well, I'm just talking about. I'm talking. Well, I'm talking about growth. You're talking about as people get older, they become more slated, right? You can't teach an old dog new tricks. Well, that's. I that's, think that's the problem. That's. But this is what I'm talking about. Okay. This is the death process. You want to stay. You want to stay youthful in your thinking, in your 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 the the flow of your energy and all of that indefinitely. Right. And so, me personally, I wouldn't agree with that. I would say. My 30s to the 40s, that's going to be a big difference. It already is. Mm-hmm. And from 40 to 50, it's going to be even a bigger difference because I'm building, just like you said, I'm building. I know for a fact, I've got, there's different, there's a reason why you can't be a president until you're 35. Is it 35? I'm, I believe it's 35. I thought it was higher. No, it has to be 35 because Vivek is running for president and he's like 36. I thought that it was like 50. No. No, it's like 35. No, what do you got? Look at Obama when he was in there. He was younger. Not thirty-five. Well, I, what, isn't he? Well, no, he was probably in his forties. Okay. Yeah. I, why do we? Just, we just happen to have old presidents. Well, it's not that you just happen to have old presidents. It's a it's a game that's difficult for a young man to get into, but okay. it's supposed to be yeah. right. You have these outliers because I mean, look at what he's done in his business. Mm-hmm. So he's he he has resources that men of his age would wouldn't typically have. Right. And, you you know, you, they want they typically want you to have some experience in government. But we all know that that's not necessarily a good thing. Look it's, at Trump. And it's not even a requirement. No, it's not. It's not. It's just it's just what we think. Mm-hmm. But it's not a requirement. Yeah. And why isn't it a requirement? You know, you don't have to have experience in this job to get the highest paying job in the position. I'm sorry. What? You got to just know people. The people choose. Yeah, that's how Trump. That's how Trump was able to get in. But, you know, so at the end of the day, let's just assume that a man's journey really only starts at 35. That's what I listen, dude. That's what I that's that's what I tell people about their life. You're like when people like most of the people that we deal with are probably in the range of 35 to 40. I'd say probably that's the average. 25 to 45 is. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, For us, for Mm -hmm. our demographics. So I tell people like, bro, your life is just getting started. If you think about zero to eighteen, your life you you're just you're downloading programs. You're just trying to figure out what what is life, right? And then you're talking about eighteen to twenty five, where now you've maybe gone to college and you've started to partying, you started building relationships. You're just figuring out life. Now you're talking about seven years, right? You compare that eighteen years to that seven years. You are you you have less experience in that over eighteen than you do at. Under 18, right? right, And so that won't actually catch up until 36. So up until 35, 36 years old, like, you're, you're, like, you are still catching up to that beginning age. Like, you people, it kills me. Like, it blows my mind when people think, like, they're 35 or even 40, and they're like, yeah, I'm going, I'm oh, over the hump, coming down the hill. Bro, your life as an actual adult has really just started. It really has just started. The problem is, is that we see it in the, t- in, in the sense of chronological age, 
And we think that, okay, now I'm 40. Well, I'm, I'm 30 more years. I'm going to be 70. I'm going to be dying soon. Like, no, bro. You should be living to 100 plus. Your life has just started. The problem is we're so sick. Mm-hmm. So it's just it's just the mindset is is frustrating. And I think that if a lot of people really started thinking and looking at their life in totality, as in, you know, you can you even at 35 or 40, like you can just start something like I think it, it, it was like Steve Harvey did his first like comedy show at 36 or something like people, people that are big name actors or big, big stars or whatever. These big people that made all this money, they didn't even start until 35 or 40. But we just see the result. We just see the end as, oh, I want to be here, but dude, I should feel like I have to start at this age. Like, no. You can start at any time. So people can start anything at any point in their life. Believe in yourself. <laughs> Believe in yourself, man. Heart of the card. Um, wow. Um, hey, Took man. Took it back. <laughs> right, what y'all know about the heart of the card? All right, what's y'all favorite Little Debbie's? Like when you used to eat Little <sighs> Debbie's back in the day? Wow. Um, Star Crunch. That's, that's, good, that's a good one. And an oatmeal cream pies. Ooh, you like them. Ooh, and Chris, then the strawberry shortcake. Mm, Chris out there liking them cream pies. <laughs> yeah, the the Star Crunch was my favorite. Star be- Crunch was good. Because yeah. it was a rare, like people didn't mess with it as mm-hmm. much. Um, and I lo- love the texture. Okay. I'm going to say, I'm going to give you my top three. You can give me all of them. What? All, all, all your favorites. I mean, honestly, I mean, only, yeah. I like them all. Mm. Except, okay. except the, said, run the gambit. Except the uh, moon pies. Moon pies were trash. trash. I, don't, I don't remember moon pies. Well, they were yellow, yellow oh, okay. had a cream. cream in the middle. The yeah, coating. I didn't like that. The moon pies no, were no, trash. Like, the yeah, but that's but there's a Is reason like everyone likes. Yeah, I think it had marshmallow. Yeah, okay. that was the, the. But everyone likes little debbies. They're nothing but processed sugar and fats. And, and we know what they are. What did you like? What was your top three? Dang, let me get it out. <laughs> um, from the bottom up. So, number three, s- strawberry shortcake rolls. Um, number two, fudge rounds. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I did like, I did like uh, Star Crunch, but they probably would be number four for me. They were good, though. Y'all ain't mess with zebra cake? Mel, that was you. You'd be on them zebra cakes. I mean, zebra cakes were good. They were all good. Wait, but- wait. Were the, were the little sticks, were those little Debbie's? Hold on a second. Okay. Number one. Nutter butters. Nutter. Okay. Nub, okay. I forgot about nutter butters. I've eaten more nutter butters than Star Crunch. So you Star, take I thought, I, like No, Star I thought. No, I was thinking nutter butters was something else. Hey, man. They're all. I don't care what the name is. They're all the same. But those are Little Debbie. Are they Little Debbie? Yeah. Uh, what about donut sticks? They're all Little. No. Yeah. I mean, they're probably like they may be. They're all Little Debbie to me. I rock with donut sticks heavy donut too. Sticks are donut sticks. The little, they were fat, and you get two in a pack. Oh, yeah, man, those are those are crazy. Oh man, oh man. Nutter butters. Okay, I might have to. I liked the uniqueness of Star Crunch, but Nutter butters was definitely number two, if not number. If one. I had Nutter butter and Star Crunch, and I can only have one, I'm taking Nutter butter. But I would, I love, I like Star Crunch too. Y'all ain't rock with coffee cakes. Coffee cakes were good too. They're not in my top. I like we like no. Our grandma used I, to I make homemade the, coffee cake. Yeah, I like the real coffee cake. So. Coffee cake was good. I mean, it listen, was all right. if it they was were there, I'm, I'll get it. And maybe sometimes I'll buy it. But I always, even now, I have never had a better coffee cake than my grandma's. Now, they used to have a one in a box. The Betty Crocker came with the came with the little baking tray and you everything. Put the little, that was lit. And those were fire every time. Lit. But i tell you what Mel's favorite snack was in that realm. What's that? Honey bun. Oh, I fucking love honey buns. <laughs> you were honey bun? Oh, I was that to... a little Debbie? I'm yeah. not sure if it was. They're all, I don't know, man. They're, they're they're all, they were son. all little In my head, Debbie's. they're all little Debbie. Frosted Debbie's. honey buns. Nigga, I forgot all about that. Uh, <laughs> Wait a second. That used to be my favorite, man. Used to, man. Yo, y'all got the uh, honey buns. Like, yeah. See, isn't it crazy? The, the only way, if you met a girl right now, right, and you dated her and y'all got married, she would never know that about you. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. But I know it. That's why you need someone like, you know what I mean? <laughs> That's why you got to get your day ones. You got to marry your day ones. Wow. Whoa. Wait, I'm crazy. Right. I mean, I'm not going to marry you, but. Oh, oh there go to the Zebra Cake. Zebra, zebra Cake, Rose, Strawberry, Swiss. They have so many. They're all Little Debbie. They're all Little Debbie. Yeah. 
Yeah, you know, little Debbie got the game on lock. They, they definitely they monopolized the game on lock. it. Twinkies weren't little Debbies though. I think hostess. they were hostess. Hostess. I mean, but in my head, they're all little Debbie. No, nah, because hostess is definitely different. No, no, they're no, no, no. The- I'm just saying when you say little Debbie, I see all of them. Right. Because oh dang. Them um them cup them hostess the yellow cups yeah them little they come in that package a the swirl on the top that little white swirl yeah they got a little yeah, I mean but they're covered up with a uh, little like some sort of some sort of sweet cream mm. man hey man see this is hard this is hard they're all good yeah, I mean just ask you I think it's easier to say which ones were your least favorite no yeah, we are gonna focus on the positive. I mean, I guess saying I'm, your least favorite is positive, right? It's I mean, kinda. you know, I'm just saying, if I had to, I mean, they have all kinds of stuff. If I had to. I mean, so, I'd never eat them again. Oh, no, no I mean, I'm, I haven't I'm good. I've a little Debbie and. I haven't had one. Jeez. Yeah. Can't even remember. But the one, now, years, I'm gonna, now, next time I go to a store, I'm going to look and just see what. Bro, I don't even go to a store where they sell them. Well, I mean, they'll have them at checkout sometimes, you know. Where? At Whole Foods? Yeah, you act like you only shop at Whole Foods. I Whole Foods. Okay, some, most some okay, grocery stores may not. If you go to the gas station, no, I don't go them. inside gas stations. Okay, there's well, nothing inside a gas station I need. Okay, well, I have been in gas stations at times where I cannot pay outside for whatever reason. I go inside. Okay, well, I mean, or maybe I'm walking down the aisle and I need a drink. There, let's not there, let's there, not sit here and play this game, Steven. Steven, you don't I buy, ge- no, you don't I buy legit- no, maybe you get thirsty on I the road. Legitim- no, I legitimately don't. When I say I don't go, I'm not saying I've never gone and I'll never go again. What I'm saying is, as a regular practice, when I go to get gas, I don't go inside. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I can't remember the last time I went inside a gas station. What if you, what that if was you, part of my transition away from toxic food. Y'all don't, y'all don't run and use a bathroom? No. What are you talking about? What if I just you have left to pee? the house. What if I it just, just left hit the you? house? I'm I'm a grown man. I think I know if I gotta pee before I leave. Hey man, I'd be drinking, drinking drinks. You'd be drinking, you'd be eating all that water. That's what it you is. You know what I'm saying? I'd be I'd be I'd be having to stop on the way. That water be catching you, Bruh, You eat a watermelon, you know, a nice bowl, and you be like, all right, I'm good. Then you hop in the car, and it just start. It just comes. Mm-hmm. It's like, hey man, I processed all right, bro. It's been 20 minutes. What you mean? This is a good show. Yeah, this is all a right. Damn good show. Make sure y'all subscribe to the channel, like the video. I am animated Mel. Let us know what type of little Debbie you like. That's Chris James. That's Stephen Michael. Ah, we will see you, beautiful people. Big Debbie. Next time.